with that kid. <laughs> well, look who came crawling home for Christmas. How's it going, Tubby? Guess you needed your stocking stuff, eh, baby? Poise. While I was staying at my sister's, I thought about a lot of things. Like how liquor and drugs have ruined our lives. So I've gathered together everyone we know so we can have an intervention. Shit, not again. I mean... You're right, Ma. I've been wasting my life. Let's go in the living room and let the healing begin. Where's Boise? Didn't he come in? Daddy, the man ran over Jesus. You don't get out of my way, you'll be spending Christmas with him, you little prick. You're gonna pay for those decorations, you fat bastard! Like to see you make me- Oh! It was the same routine every couple of years. Mom went to her sister's and sobered up. Then Mom came home and forced Percy to dry out too. Usually it never lasted, so Kevin didn't particularly care. Hey boy, seeing as I'm sober now and I'm supposed to give a shit what happens to you, why don't you go to school? Kevin told Percy it was Christmas holidays. Oh, well, isn't that convenient, broken head? Then go clean off Daddy's car so he ain't stranded here with you and your old lady. Hey, Scary Spencer. Do you know what your parents are getting you for Christmas? Kevin told the kid that the only thing they got was on his nerves, and that if he didn't want to be pulling the salty boot out of his ass, he'd stop doing the same thing right quick. Well, I guess I'll go hang out with my friends. That's because I have friends, Spencer. Too bad you can't say the same. Kevin said he had plenty of friends, and that they were all hiding in his garden shed. <clears throat> yeah, right. Uh, just like your imaginary duck friend. It was Pete Wilcox and Bull. They'd both escaped from prison, and they were laying low in Kevin's garden shed until they could find a room. Let me tell you something about friendship, punk. When you're a cross-dressing heroin addict and a legless junkie on a skateboard, you can use all the friends you can get. Besides that, Kevin is God. Do you understand the Messiah? And they're never taking me back to that asylum either. No need to thank us, Kevin. We could hear that kid giving you the business. Kevin told the guys to haul their crazy freak asses back into the shed before they brought the heat down on them. Man kills man with a weapon. Details at 11. It says here part of our recovery involves apologizing to everyone we've wronged while we was under the influence. Okay, that means we gotta go to the police station, the pet store, the liquor store, the UIC, the UIC complaints window, the UIC security desk in the cemetery. Hey, and don't forget about the boy. Fine, I'll start with him. Put a pot of coffee on. Hey, lunatic, get over here. I got to apologize for all the bad things I've done as a father. Sorry about picking on you all the time, and I'm sorry I stole all your stuff, and I'm sorry I let your mom drink all through your pregnancy. I dropped you a few times too when you were a baby, once on a bed. Sorry about all that. Sorry about the time I come to your school and embarrassed you with my hookers on the baseball diamond, and that other time, that thing with the umbrella. Well, that was way out in left field. Someone should have called me on that one. I think that's it. Oh, and you know that guy from the Quebec Mafia who put a price on the head of whoever screwed his wife? Well, I told him it was you so I could get the reward. Kevin asked Percy why he'd sell out his own blood with a bullshit lie like that. Guy gave me a thousand bucks. Besides, what are you pissing and moaning about? I didn't have to tell you. 
and now I have enough money to make my dreams come true. Kevin noticed that being clean and sober hadn't necessarily cured Percy of being stupid. Anyone lazy enough not to put on pants when it was 40 below probably wasn't wasting too much of a life by drinking anyway. Boise, I'm tired of you walking around the house naked. First you took my liquor, now this? It's my goddamn house, I'll walk around naked if I want to. Yeah, well you're not the one who's gotta clean the upholstery. Well why don't you show the whole fucking neighborhood? How do you know it wasn't the stupid boy? Oh, it's you all right. Why do you think the neighbors is always complaining when you make snow angels? Listen, kid, it sounds like you're in deep trouble. The Quebec Mafia is all ex-spikers. You'll have to go on the run with us. Kevin said even he knew there was no way to hide from the Mafia. Don't worry, I have a photo album full of forged identities. It took me a few years to do, but I'm sure we can find you a match. Kevin asked Bo how he had so many phony IDs. First, I check all the obituaries and find someone born in another town. I send away for a new birth certificate under the dead guy's name. With the bank account, get new credit cards and from there, just keep adding. Kevin really liked the ID belonging to a guy named Ronaldo Sanchez. They looked a bit similar, and Bull said the real Ronaldo Sanchez had died in a vicious beating, which is the way Kevin wanted to go in real life. <laughs> One last thing. <laughs> if we really want to throw the Mafia off your trail, we have to fake your suicide. Up and put on your disguise, Messiah. The cops will be here any minute. You're the guys who uh, phoned in the Sousa? That's right, Constable. Saw it as clear as day. Mm -hmm. Kevin Spencer. Yeah, I think I busted that kid once. Oh well, uh, <clears throat> no get lost. Better phone today. It worked, kid. Kevin Spencer is dead. Long live Ronaldo Sanchez. Jimmy, I want to buy that pay TV the scrambler box off you. Now I'm sober, it turns out I can get it up again. Thought I'd throw one into the wife a few times over Christmas. Boy, I'd sure kill for a drink, though, eh? You don't sell liquor here, do you? No. Yeah, well, I'm sober now, so it doesn't matter, right? Here's the box. Not even those little airline bottles? Eighty bucks. Okay, I got it. <laughs> You're in for a treat. Mood Olympics is on this month, and they give the javelin throw a whole new meaning. Uh, I hope you're not paying with a check, cause... Cash up front, you earthhole. Whoa, that's quite a wad. Jeez, I was gonna offer you a sweet chance at some money, but seeing as you're all what set- What money? Uh, well, I got a friend who's got a problem with his cash flow. He's looking for an eager guy with a cigarette lighter to help him screw the insurance company. I can do that. Remember Thambuka night at the Legion? <laughs> I remember that. I think they built a skateboard park in the crater you left. Here's my buddy's address. I'll call him and tell him to expect you. I'm there. To make his new identity work, Kevin figured he'd better get a job. Since if the cops caught him stealing, they'd sell his ass out to the mob, which would really ruin Christmas. Because he still figured jobs were for assholes, he got the laziest shit job on earth. Cashier at a self-serve gas station. Work wasn't as bad as Kevin thought it would be. The fumes kept his head nice and fuzzy, and he got to ride the hoist in the garage. Kevin's favorite part was waiting for the last customer of the day so he could steal his car and drive to his new apartment.
Hi, Jesus. Tough day at the office. Welcome home, Kevin. We can lay low here until we have enough money to move to South America. Some people owe me favors there. Kevin asked Pete what he had in the bag. I found a bunch of hospital medical waste. I'm sure we can all find something we like in there. Can I help you? My buddy Jimmy said you'll pay me some serious money if I can help you. Then he said I should wink at you, but I didn't want you to think I was fruity, so I'm just telling you instead. I see. Mr. Spencer, it's like this. I have some serious financial concerns that have <sighs> rendered the liquidity of my portfolio rather static. Consequently, I'm going to have to circumvent the more conventional strictures of profit and loss to render my stocks viable by the next quarter. After all, Adam Smith's laissez-faire economic principles aren't inflexible in our age of conspicuous consumption, right? Yeah, you want me to come back to your office and torch the place. In so many words. I need it to look like an accident, though. So please, try to make it look like an electrical fire. Do it on Christmas Eve when no one's here. Here's the key. No problem. Well, I'm off to Monaco. Uh, get some sun and an alibi. Quit winking at me, fag. Oh, I get it. God bless us, everyone. God bless us, everyone. God bless us, everyone. God damn it, how do you hook that fucking shit up? The only problem with spending Christmas with junky mental patients was all the hallucinations. Look at me. I'm Gypsy Rose Lee. Yoo-hoo! I'm dancing for you, Messiah. I'm shaking my holy money maker's birthday booty for you. Spiders! So many spiders! Kevin was getting spooked by his mental patient friends, and he was glad he'd pulled the Christmas Eve shift at the station. Mostly because he'd run out of cough syrup, and he was really looking forward to huffing the fumes. Goodbye, my love! Sanchez, mm. have you used a relative named Ronaldo? Kevin told him his name was Ronaldo, probably because he was stupid from the fumes. Really? Huh. Well, I got a message for you, Ronaldo. Come into the garage. <laughs> it's kind of private. That's when Kevin realized Bull had stolen the identity of someone else who was wanted by the Mafia. <laughs> Quit! Take him off the hoist. I have a better idea. I won't ruin the surprise, but it involves this high-pressure hose and this stump tag. Put his pants down. Wait, I think he's trying to see something. Kevin told the gang that his real name wasn't Ronaldo Sanchez after all. Kid says his real name's Kevin Spencer. Says we can check with the cops. They know him pretty well. Kevin Spencer, huh? Well, that's different. Kevin breathed a sigh of relief. Yeah, Kevin Spencer's the guy who banged the boss's wife. The reward for killing him is three times as big as Sanchez. Give him the hoist. That was the boss. He said we're not killing him in a painful enough way. <laughs> we got to bring him to the compound. Oh, man. But this is so much fun. Uh, how can I say no to you boys? Just make sure he's still alive when we stuff him in the trunk. <laughs> Kevin 
God damn it, it's Christmas and I never wanted a drink so bad in my fucking life. Oh, don't think about it, baby. Just look at the nice porno. I guess. At least now we get to see all those channels between 60 and 107. You remember the old days? When you used to try unscrambling the picture yourself by playing with the horizontal hold? Maybe I'll show you my horizontal hold. <gasps> See, baby? The movie's getting to you already. We interrupt this porno movie for a news bulletin. The search continues for the corpse of suicide victim Kevin Spencer. Witnesses saw the young man drive his car onto the bridge and leap to his death. Oh my god, the boy killed himself! Son of a bitch, little bastard owed me ten bucks. Did we ever insure the boy? We don't have much hope of recovering the body due to the strong currents and the fact that we have to be at a hockey tournament by six. Who are you playing this week, Chief? We're gonna open a can of kick ass and the pussies from Eli's house of carpet. Sounds great, best of luck. So, another suicidal teen meets his end. And now, back to tonight's adult science fiction feature, Bucking Rogers' Big Fat Shaft in the 21st Century. Give us the six-pack, baby. Gosh, I wonder why the boy did it. He had everything. Loving parents, a stable home where he could drink, and a nice place to store those weird blobs he found on the highway. Probably because I think them out to the mafia. Boise, how could you? The fucking the scrambler didn't pay for itself. Well, at least we'll always have that to remember in mind. Shut up. Now, sir, you say you gave this prostitute 50 bucks for the works. By the works, you rightfully assumed... Your Honor, when I said the works, I meant... Hey, baby, when it's your turn to talk, I'll tell you. Now, in my day, the works meant everything. Rub, suck, penetrate. Now, pay up, baby. How come I never get a judge like that? Hey, if you're good... Maybe Santa will bring you one for Christmas. Christmas? Holy shit, it's Christmas Eve. I gotta go towards that building. On Christmas? Can't you do it tomorrow? Fuck Christmas. I'm getting two Gs for this. Keep your motor running. Please state your business. I'm Santa Claus. I gotta make a fucking delivery. I'm real busy, so don't dick me around. I'm sorry, Santa. We have to check everyone, but I should have known it was you. Head on in. This is easy. First, I make it look like electrical fire. I just light it and start counting the money. Open up, your fucking door! Percy was learning the lesson that amateur arsonists usually learn the hard way. If you're torching a room with the door closed, it creates a vacuum, which isn't such a big deal, unless the door opens outward, in which case you're pretty much fucked. Oh, this is just perfect. Merry fucking Christmas. Gotta get out of here before someone sees me. It appears a fat arsonist has become the victim of his own stupidity. No one's sure how he'll die, but police experts have created a chalk outline of what they speculate will be the estimated dimensions of the stain he'll leave on the pavement. Stay calm, Percy. Just walk straight. No different than a hundred DUIs. Elevator, fuck too. <coughs> Lucky I'm a two pack a day man, so the smoke don't bug me so much. <laughs> oh, my head! <gasps> Luckily for Percy, the fat ass he'd spent so many years acquiring on the couch finally did him some good. 
It was so wide it slowed him down. Ah! Holy shit. Except for the cracked ribs and internal bleeding, I made it. Percy, you's a fucking genius. So, Gavin Spencer, we finally meet. Look, Marietta, I want you to see your boyfriend's face when I cut his eyes out and make them into earrings for Christmas. I don't care what you do to him. He ain't the guy anyway. Nice try, protecting your boyfriend, eh? You're an idiot, big daddy. The kid's only 15 years old. When I start getting down, it's with a man, not with some underage freak. Kevin told Big Daddy that he was being framed and that he'd never laid a hand on his woman. My informant would lie. Don't pretend it wasn't you who fondled my Marietta. Don't pretend it wasn't you who drank all my beer and left this on my best silk sheets. That's when Kevin realized the only reason Percy finked him out was because he was the one who banged the gangster's wife. Marietta, is that true? Tabarnak. You're lucky, Spencer. We're only gonna let you go with a severe beating. Hey, boy. What the fuck happened to you? Got any cough, Thurb? Cause Daddy's jumping off the wagon. Oh, yeah, that's the sweet stuff. Hey, phony ID, too. Merry Christmas. Listen, boy, I think the heat's gonna be on for a while, so Daddy's gonna be scarce for a few months. Tell your mom not to tell my shit again. Uh-oh. I think we're getting off here. You can't be my son. My son committed suicide off the bridge. Kevin asked his mother why she was acting so stupid. Look. I know you're my rotten kid, but I don't want you back. Life's been pretty sweet around here now. I don't gotta pour food down your ugly face. As far as the cops are concerned, you're dead. And that's the story I'm sticking to. Oh, what the fuck? You're still good for a few more years of child support. Merry Christmas. With that kid. Is that the way you never did? You better not cross his path. He's a tea poke and alcoholic sociopath. Yoo-hoo! I'm dancing for you, Messiah.